Hello, this is Mighty Owl. Hey, I have a little riddle for you. What do a worm, a squirrel, a hawk, and grass have in common? Can you guess? Food! Exactly! They are all living things, and they all happen to be connected because of food. They are part of the same food web. A food web sounds like a spider web, and actually is very similar. In a food web, plants and animals are connected in many different ways. Nutrients and energy are passed from one living thing to another. How might you ask? Rightly so. Well, let's find out. All living things depend on one another for food. Food gives every plant and animal energy to grow. It's the power that keeps us alive. Some animals eat only plants. Others eat meat. And there are others that eat both plants and meat. Let's take a look at this forest habitat. The grass gets its energy from the sunlight and turns it into food. It makes or produces its own food. And guess what? This is why plants are called producers. Then the grass gets eaten by a grasshopper. The grasshopper is a tasty snack for a mouse. And then the mouse becomes dinner for a snake. It's one living thing eating the other. Each form of food is a link in a chain, a food chain. In a food chain, the food allows one path, kind of like a ladder. We start at the bottom with the grass and keep moving up to the snake. Since food provides energy, this chain shows how energy transfers between living things. If plants are called producers, then animals are called consumers because they eat or consume other things for energy. They don't have the superpower like plants to make their own food. Now, a food web is a bit more complex. It's a group of food chains that are all connected in one ecosystem. Again, think of a spider web. It's not just one straight line. It's made up of many threads that are all woven together. Let's take the forest and try to draw an example here. We know that the grasshopper eats the grass, but it isn't the only one. A rabbit and a deer could also make the grass a crunchy meal. And a hawk might hunt the rabbit, but a wolf or owl could be interested in making the rabbit its lunch. Back to the grasshopper. It can be a meal for a mouse as well as a robin or a frog. So as you can see, all of these living things depend on one another for survival and they are connected through many strings, not just one ladder. Imagine if one string in a spider web is broken. The web is weaker and will fall apart. This is also true of a food web. What do you think would happen if the mouse disappeared from the forest? Take a look. Without the mouse, there are a lot more grasshoppers because they aren't being eaten by mice. And if there are more grasshoppers, they will eat more grass maybe too much. This leaves less food for the rabbits and deer. The hawk and the owl will not have the mice to eat, and this means they'll hunt more rabbits. The rabbits are now low on food and being hunted more and more by the owls and the hawks. Yikes! This is not looking good for the rabbits in this forest. So, as you can see, if just one thing in a food web disappears... It would have an effect on the entire connection and ecosystem. And this is true of any food web. Put on your scuba gear because we are headed to the ocean to look at another example. The sun is once again the beginning of this food web. In the ocean, plants look a little different like algae and seaweed. Animals like shrimp and a tiny sea creature called zooplankton feed on algae. Along comes a hungry fish who gobbles up the shrimp and some zooplankton. That shrimp could also be dinner for a seal or maybe a passing seagull. So once again, we see that everything in this web is connected and each part depends on the other. If the shrimp disappear, there would be too much algae in the water, which can create major problems for the fish. You see... Algae can make it so that there is not enough oxygen in the water. And fish need oxygen to survive. 
If the fish die because of the lack of oxygen, then the seagulls and seals will have less food to eat. Only one change can destroy an entire food chain. So, my mighty scientists, as you can see, a food web is a group of food chains, all very well connected. A balance between producer plants and consumer animals is very, very important to have a strong ecosystem. Now, grab your pencils and draw yourself another example of a mighty food web. And I'll see you in the next video lesson.